Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more WWE 2K19 Universe Mode. I'm Brendan Plays, and this is another edition of Monday Night Raw. We've got two more Raws to go until Clash of Champions. And tonight, we've got a big show for you. John Cena is in action. He'll be facing Bobby Roode one-on-one -on -one in our main event. And also, we have a big, big matchup between Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. This week on Raw, Mojo Rawley will take on Finn Balor in singles action. We'll also see Baron Corbin go one-on-one -on -one against Hideo Itami. Including that, we'll see Alicia Fox and Tamina team up to take on the Bella Twins, Brie and Nikki Bella. And we've got Roderick Strong going one-on-one -on -one with Chad Gable. Two great competitors there on the rise, meeting in that one. Should be a good contest. We'll see Sanity take on Fandango and Tyler Breeze, the Fashion Police. Sasha Banks versus Becky Lynch, that match we mentioned a moment ago. The winner becomes the number one contender for the Women's Championship. And John Cena versus Bobby Roode. Cena's the number one contender for the IC title. Can he keep the momentum rolling on with a victory against Bobby Roode? Finn Balor got a win over Mojo Rawley. Baron Corbin defeated Hideo Itami. The Bella Twins defeated Alicia Fox and Tamina. We also saw Roderick Strong get a win over Chad Gable. And last but not least, we have Sanity picking up a win. Fashion Police. So our first major match of the night, we're going to see Becky Lynch take on Sasha Banks. Here tonight on Raw, the winner will take on Alexa Bliss at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Looking forward to this one. Two of the top women right now on Monday Night Raw will clash here tonight. With the winner getting an opportunity at the Women's Championship from Raw at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view, as we said. We've got this Raw and one more Raw to go until that event. So not too far away at all. Becky Lynch, I think, has all the potential in the world to get back to the top. She is a former women's champion. In fact, she was a women's champion in Season 4. Sasha Banks, she's actually had some success in recent times. She lost the women's championship two months ago at Payback to Alexa Bliss. So Sasha Banks wanting to win back that championship that she lost to Alexa. She had a one-on-one -on -one rematch against Alexa Bliss over on SmackDown just before she was drafted over to Raw. It was, of course, the night of the draft. And, well, Sasha Banks had that opportunity, but she failed. She lost on that occasion. But nonetheless, she is here on Raw, and this is her chance. It's a fresh start for her with the women's brand split now in play. Sasha Banks... She's pretty cocky, she's pretty arrogant, she is the boss, but for a reason. She's been able to get the job done for a while, she's been very, very successful, multiple time women's champion, and without a doubt, one of the top women here in Universe Mode history. We're about to get this one underway, Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. Here we go, this should be good. Looking forward to this one. There's now Becky, oh, gets slammed down to start things off. Sasha Banks with a decent little start there. And I think in recent times, you have to probably give the edge to Sasha Banks, considering that she was a women's champion only a couple months ago. Of course, she won the women's championship back at the Elimination Chamber against Nia Jax. Surprised us all. I don't think anyone really expected her to get the job done. But she was able to do it. She won that one. And of course, she was able to retain that championship thanks to the help of Alexa Bliss when she had that rematch. That rivalry that she had with Nia Jax and Alexa Bliss did begin. It was a bit of a triple threat rivalry. So Sasha Banks has already been to the top, already experienced Alexa Bliss a few times. So she does have a bit of big match experience against the current women's champion. So you'd have to get the feeling that going into that one, Sasha Banks should be pretty well prepared to win that matchup on this occasion. Has she learned from her mistakes though over the last couple months? That is the major question. Right now she needs to beat Becky Lynch to make it to that event. And she shrugs off. Sasha does Becky in a clothesline to follow up. Nice combination of maneuvers there by Becky Lynch, who, I, as I said, she may not have been champion for a little bit of time now, but I tell you what, she was a tremendous champion when she did win it. Back at Season 4, last season, last SummerSlam, she won the Women's Championship from Charlotte. She held on to the title until Survivor Series of that season, until Nia Jax did beat her for it. And of course, Nia Jax lost the title to Sasha Banks. So both women having some experience against Nia Jax. One, vic one victorious, the other not. As now, 
Sasha wrapped up on those ropes there, the second rope. And now Becky's going to take advantage. Oh! The back of Becky Lynch's leg landing right onto Sasha Banks. And she's not letting up just yet. Continuing the offense right now with more kicks and strikes to follow it up. Now just continue to wear away at Sasha Banks. Not a bad idea from Becky Lynch. As we said, plenty of experience from her in championship matchups as well. Both women very well equipped to potentially take down Alexa Bliss for that women's championship going forward. Right hand there by Becky. And now Sasha over the top of the rope and tempted right hand blocked there. Sasha Banks now has a hold of Becky Lynch and all slapped away. And Becky Lynch with a scoop slam. Well, Becky Lynch, she's definitely the fan favorite right now. Sasha Banks not. And Becky Lynch is drawing on this crowd for some support here. And she looks to try and set Sasha Banks up potentially for that. Well, I gotta say that disarmor would probably be enough to put Sasha Banks away with a tap out victory. I don't know if she's done enough just yet to force the submission. But later on the match, she'll be definitely looking for it as a drop kick there by Sasha could turn the tide here. As there's the cover kick out at one though. Close encounter right now between these two women. As we said, so much to like about both of them. And Alexa Bliss, obviously, she's only five foot tall, five feet of fury. She's not big in height or stature, but she certainly has, I think, the smarts about her to, to win these matchups. She always finds a way, always has a plan up her sleeve and things aren't going right. She knows how to manipulate the situation to benefit her. In recent times, I've even seen Alexa Bliss well, join force, forces with Mickey James, which has surprised me. Mickey James, a veteran around here. And Mickey James and Alexa Bliss have become pretty friendly backstage. So we'll see if that leads to anything. But right now, this match is close. But we have to take a quick break in it. We'll be back after this announcement. Last Man Standing is the match between Randy Orton and Finn Balor at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. These two men will meet one-on-one -on -one with the winner earning a WWE Universal Championship opportunity down the line. Only one man will remain standing. Who will it be? Randy Orton will take on Finn Balor. This rivalry has been going for a couple months now and it will culminate at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Well, that's a matchup I'm certainly looking forward to. Randy Orton versus Finn Balor, last man standing. But the big news about that one is the winner becomes the number one contender for the Universal Championship, which, of course, has been what those two men have been fighting for, all wanting to become the next Universal Champion. Haven't quite got there. It's Sasha Banks with that neck breaker. She's used this to win the Women's Championship in the past, and it's been that cover with the weight on the legs there of Becky Lynch, the pressure on the shoulders there in the neck area, so much right there that it's so difficult for her to kick out, but she's able to do it, but certainly making it tough. And now look out, the knees to the back, here's trouble. The bank statement, but did Becky Lynch have a boot underneath the rope? I don't know. The referee's calling and saying, yes, she did. I didn't think she did, but well, apparently that happened. Now, Becky Lynch with a back exploder, is it? Yes. Becky Lynch looking good. And now Sasha Banks could be in a world of trouble. Just moments away. You know, she was moments away from winning this match. And moments ago, she had that bank statement in. And now Becky Lynch is trying to get back control of this matchup in her favor. No surprise this one is a close time considering how good both of these women are. Just stars right here. As now, oh, Sasha driven. Right into the map there by Becky Lynch. This is looking good right now for, for Becky because Sasha flat on her back. She can continue the offense right here as the knees driven into Sasha. And this may not be good at all if you're Sasha Banks right now. This is going to be really, really tough for her. She's got to bounce back though. And so, oh, the double knees. Shoulders down. She's grabbed a hold of those legs. Could be it. Oh, a kick out again. And Sasha Banks looking okay so far. Uppercut there by Becky Lynch. But Becky just continues to take control whenever Sasha Banks is about to take that next step in this matchup. Lynch has got an answer for it. There's a backsploiter there by Becky Lynch. 
the Explorer Suplex. Will it be enough to put Sasha Banks away to become the number one contender? Oh, nearly a kick out at two. And Becky Lynch is saying to the referee, what's that three? She can't believe it. She's going to have to. She's regrouped already, though. She's not wasting any time. Now looking for the arm. The disarmor locked in. But Sasha Banks quickly getting out of it. Well, I'm a little bit surprised. Sasha Banks scooting out of that very, very quickly. Able to survive for right now. Another attempt, though, at it later on may prove to be fatal for Sasha Banks, though, as the head sister takedown executed pretty nicely there. And now the drop kick into the back of Becky Lynch. Sasha Banks putting together a couple of maneuvers here, putting some pressure back on the Becky Lynch. Oh, kick out again. The shoulders of Becky Lynch down for the count of two, and Sasha Banks, well, after withstanding a lot of punishment, she's starting to work her way back into it. As a suplex again, Becky Lynch goes down harshly into her back. And Sasha Banks telling us all how great she truly is. Sasha now to the top. Here we go. What can she produce? Went for that frog splash. Lynch back to her feet though. Forced the miss. The cover now. The hook in the leg. But a kick out again. Lynch forcing a major miss because if Sasha Banks now is that frog splash, I get the feeling that she would have really felt as though she had Becky Lynch beat and would have tried for the bank statement to follow it up. She just grabs a hold of Becky Lynch and takes her back into the canvas and now Becky Lynch feeling some more punishment and pain thanks to Sasha Banks right now. The elbow strike right to the forehead as well. This is close between the two of them right now. You can really go either way here. Becky Lynch got Sasha against the rope and oh over the top straight away just launched her over the top and Sasha falling away pretty easily not offering any resistance to grab one of those ropes to stop herself from going over the top perhaps you thought maybe if I go to the outside of the ring I can't be paired not a bad idea at all the midsection of Sasha onto the ringside barricade that will hurt Sasha with an open hand slap right to the face. Nothing pretty about that one. Lynch now. Oh, into the steel steps. Count of seven, though. Will we see a counter? It's enough to win here. It's enough to become the number one contender. We saw that with Shinsuke Nakamura and Randy Orton. The disqualification in that one proved to be enough to make Nakamura the number one contender. Count out will work. Is now. Oh! Becky working away on the arm now. She's starting to sense a victory here. Thinking about putting her away. Can she do it? That's the big question here. It's not going to be easy whatsoever. Has she got enough in the tank to get it done? Becky Lynch looking good. As, oh, another suplex. Sasha Banks goes down. Sasha not offering much resistance right now. She's going to try and... Turn things around ASAP before it becomes too late. Becky Lynch gaining more and more confidence here. Sasha Banks down again. Lynch feels as though this could be an opportunity. She does get two though. And she's just starting, I, I think she's starting to realize that I could win this here. And she's going to go for it now. She's going to line up Sasha Banks. She's going to grab that arm. Can she reel it back? Oh, she's got it locked in. Disarmers is locked in. And Sasha can't, can't stay in it any longer. She has to tap out. And Becky Lynch wins and becomes the new number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. Crucial win for Becky Lynch. A must-win match in my mind. If she didn't win this one... Well, I just got the feeling that uh, she would have been slipping far down the totem pole here on Raw. And obviously, she hasn't been at the top. She hasn't had those opportunities over the last number of months. So I just feel as though Becky Lynch, she needed that one just to regain the confidence and believe that she's good enough to be once again the women's champion here on Raw. Nice win, though, for Becky Lynch. And she celebrates in the corner. Pretty happy with herself. And well, wait, wait, wait a second. From behind, that's Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. These two women have featured in NXT and they're here tonight on Raw. Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan.
Beating down Becky Lynch now. As Sasha Banks walks away. Banks though, she he hearing something. And oh, Sasha's coming to the ring. Sasha's going to come save Becky. But no, that's Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot is there to stop that from happening. This is a premeditated assault by Ruby Riot. Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan. Riot has assembled a squad of women here to help her. And Ruby looking to make a big statement of her own. She was recently drafted here to Raw. And oh, a senton. And she's looking, looking to make her presence known as Sarah Logan connects there on Becky Lynch. Liv Morgan now. What can she produce? Shot to the midsection. Here comes Liv. And oh, the knee right to the face. Logan and Morgan celebrating now. And Liv Morgan saying basically she's just taken out the trash. Liv and Sarah lay out Lynch. Meanwhile, Ruby Riot taking care of Sasha Banks. A kick right to the face. That Riot kick, and now it has certainly been a statement by Ruby Riot, Sarah Logan, and Liv Morgan. They have taken down Lynch and Banks. And now the current Universal Champion, Samoa Joe, makes his way to the ring. We understand that we're going to hear from Samoa Joe regarding his upcoming match at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view against Shinsuke Nakamura. We'll hear from Samoa Joe. We'll get a bit of an idea of what he's thinking and feeling before this big matchup. Samoa Joe has been Universal Champion since WrestleMania. Defended the title successfully at Payback. And of course, he was able to escape last week on Raw with a, well, a, an offense, if you will, as well. So let's hear from Samoa Joe. Shinsuke Nakamura and I will face each other in two weeks' time at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view for the Universal Championship. Shinsuke Nakamura. Look, Nakamura, he is the number one contender. Does he deserve to be it? I don't really believe so, but he is. So let's give credit where credit is due. Nakamura and I, we will face each other for this championship. In fact, look, I look at Shinsuke Nakamura and I really believe that there is a lot of similarities between Nakamura and I. We both came into the WWE as established stars elsewhere. We both came into the WWE with a lot of expectation, a lot of belief that we could become a WWE champion at some point. And that's where the similarities end because everything that I just said, I have accomplished. I came into the WWE as a potential big name for this company. And not only have I become a potential big name, I have become the big name, the premier talent here on Monday Night Raw. I am the man right now on Raw. Where has Shinsuke Nakamura been? He came in, he won the US title, he's had a couple of title runs with that. What has he done ever since? Nothing. For the last year, Nakamura has said that he is going to become a main event star. And it's taken him all this time to get a one-on-one -on -one match for the Universal Championship. And the only way he was able to get that match is because Finn Balor handed it to him. Finn Balor screwed Randy Orton and gave Nakamura the win. So Shinsuke Nakamura, you don't really deserve this opportunity that you've been given. But now that you've got it, it's time to give you a bit of dose of reality. You are not in my league. I am the Universal Champion for a reason. There is a reason why you have been struggling, scratching, and clawing your way to the top and never been able to get there. It's because you are just simply not good enough. You are overhyped, and as far as I'm concerned, you're washed up. At Clash of Champions, I'm going to prove to everybody just why I am still the Universal Champion. I beat Seth Rollins, the man. I defended my title again at Payback. I continue to prove everybody wrong. And Nakamura, there is not a person on this world that believes you are good enough to beat me right now. And at Clash of Champions, I'm going to put you down. Strong words from a very confident Samoa Joe who definitely believes he can retain his championship at the Clash of Champions pay-per-view. Nakamura versus Samoa Joe will take place it will be a singles match 
for the Universal title. Well, it's time for our main event here tonight on Monday Night Raw. And we're going to see the glorious one, Bobby Roode, in action against John Cena. Last week, John Cena was successful in becoming the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship when he won a fatal four-way match against Bobby Roode. And, of course, Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler were involved in that one as well. So Bobby Roode, he was actually pinned in that match. John Cena got the better of him. He got it done. Bobby Roode looking for some redemption here tonight. Well, it just feels as though John Cena might just have Bobby Roode's number. Roode continuously focused on this issue that he's had with Drew McIntyre. It's been going on for a long time now. And Roode, he was watching his back the entire match. He was focusing on Drew McIntyre whenever he could, making sure that McIntyre wasn't going to win that one, rather than trying to win the match himself. Just for whatever reason, Drew McIntyre is in Bobby Roode's head right now, and, well, John Cena took advantage of it. Bobby Roode believes that he's focusing tonight, and he can beat John Cena. So here comes John Cena, the number one contender. We saw last week Cena and Braun Strowman. They went at it after... That fatal four-way match, Strowman came out, met John Cena, and they fought tooth and nail until it was separated and broken up. Well, because of that, our general manager Christian has decided it is within its best interest to keep these two separated until Clash of Champions. That is why Braun Strowman is not here tonight. Instead, John Cena can rest a little bit easier knowing that he's not going to get beaten up after this one or blindsided at any point. Strowman not here tonight. But hang on, we're getting some news that backstage Samoa Joe here, as you can see, just picked up a steel chair coming into the locker room. As you can see, Nakamura is in here and Samoa Joe with a steel chair on the face of Nakamura. This is Shinsuke Nakamura's own locker room and Samoa Joe has stormed in and has got a steel chair in his attacking. Nakamura did not know that Joe was coming. Blindsided here, but now the fight is on. Nakamura gonna try and defend himself against Samoa Joe as he sends him into the locker itself. Now right hand there. Shinsuke Nakamura heard the, the talk that Samoa Joe just had with the WWE Universe, talking about how great that he was and that Nakamura is washed up. So there's no doubt that Nakamura is going to be wanting his hands on Samoa Joe. I don't think he expected it right now as Joe just finished up talking in the ring, came backstage and immediately targeted Nakamura. Not sure why, but maybe Joe is a little bit more worried than we thought. Nakamura lining up Joe after steel chair shots. Joe's in trouble and a Ken Shaza by Shinsuke. Joe's been laid out, and I think he's made a big mistake. He's underestimated Nakamura, as we had to put the matchup that we're going to see right now on halt, as we're underway here. We got to see Rude and Cena a moment ago, but we had to put this one on halt for about a minute or two there. I wonder if that would benefit either Cena or, or Bobby Rude. The adrenaline kind of wearing off a little bit before this match began. Maybe John Cena. Would uh, be at more of a disadvantage there. Always comes to the ring hyped up, raring to go. Bobby Roode a little bit more reserved and relaxed at times. Just likes to you know, toot his own horn as much as he possibly can. And I'm getting a chance to soak this crowd in and just kind of scope out Cena before the match began. So Nakamura lays out Samoa Joe. Those two will meet one-on-one -on -one at the upcoming Class of Champions pay-per-view. Right now, Bobby Roode does not have a match at Class of Champions. And... We've seen Root and McIntyre go at it at payback. We're hearing that that will not happen at Class of Champions. Instead, Bobby Root will have to watch at home. McIntyre and Root, we're both gunning for that Intercontinental Championship that Braun Strowman ha does have. But it end up being John Cena as the man that's been good enough to take it away from Strowman. Braun Strowman has held the championship for 48 weeks if he can make it a Class of Champions, still as champion. Only four weeks shy of being a one-year reigning champion. I mean, one other man has done that, and that was Finn Balor with the WWE Championship, SummerSlam to SummerSlam, Season 3 to Season 4. It's the first time ever in Universe Mode for the Intercontinental Championship. If Braun Strowman can make it, he's got to get to Money in the Bank, which is our pay-per-view following Clash of Champions if he wants to make it 
to that one year run. Might be easy, that is for sure. As Bobby Roo with a side headlock, unable to really capitalize there. Is Cena with an elbow right there in the midsection of Roo. John Cena would love to spoil the party. Love to stop Braun Strowman from getting the one year reign. Braun Strowman has become a bit of a fan favorite though. He's certainly beloved by the fans, have enjoyed his championship reign and the difficulties that he's had and the great matchups and opponents he's been able to, to defeat. John Cena has not had a championship since season two. So nearly three years since John Cena's last title win, which of course was the World Heavyweight Championship, now known as the Universal Championship. So tough going for John Cena. Hasn't tried it, his hand at all in the tag team. Vision! What a power slam by Rude. He thinks he might have Cena beat here. He believes he's got it all wrapped up. Has he done it? No. So Bobby Roode obviously believes that uh, he should be the next man to face off against Braun Strowman. But Roode hasn't had the wins. He's been a little bit down on form as of late. I think Bobby Roode just struggling a little bit when it comes to these big matchups and the fact that he's had to deal with Drew McIntyre. And you know, Roode just down on luck, I suppose, if you will. He came into Raw from the, well, around about uh, the, the beginning of the year, around Raw Rumble time, Bobby Roode officially signed a Raw contract. He brought the NXT Championship to Raw. He was still NXT Champion when he came to Raw. Drew McIntyre ended up taking the title away from him. And, uh, well, I Cena, hang on. Look out for the Fire Knuckle Shuffle here. Hold that thought. John Cena looking for it. Can he find it? Right on the button there. John Cena with the Five Knuckle Shuffle. Now thinking about the AA. John Cena, will he be able to do it here? Bobby Roode's in trouble. Cena, go for the AA. Got it. Cena with the AA. The cover. Two. No, oh, the shoulder's up. And Cena just stumbled and hesitated for a moment there. Not sure why. I think that kind of ruined a bit of the momentum behind the move. Normally Cena picks up his opponents and snaps them straight back down. But Cena picked up Roode, held him there for a little bit of time, then hit the AA. A strange decision by Cena. And one that might come back to bite him because I just felt as though he lost a bit of momentum behind the move and allowed Rude to have enough of the tank to kick out. Bobby Rude, as we said, you know, coming in to Raw on the biggest contract for an NXT superstar in history. Raw really signing Rude to a big, big deal. And they felt as though that uh, he was going to be worth the investment and he could be a a universal championship contender at some point. He's always there, but not quite just yet. Rude has got a focus on the IC title as of late. He won't be challenging for that one either. So Bobby Rude will have to be kind of rethinking his approach here. What does he have to do? Rude, far from like, nobody really has a lot of respect for Bobby Rude around here. Rude likes to tell us how great he is, and that was kind of annoying a lot of the fans here in the WWE. So he's lost a lot of respect from the fans and the fact that that big rivalry with Drew McIntyre, well, Bobby Roode just has struggled to beat McIntyre on every single occasion. John Cena with a power bomb now might be looking for a little bit more here. Bobby Roode's in some trouble. Well, Roode just can't seem to get going. As now Cena, shoulder walk takedown. Here comes John Cena. This is when he's at his best. Cena. Here we go, picks up Bobby Roode, slams him down, and we're about to see the five knuckle shuffle again. Cena thinking about it. Might be looking for something else, but oh, Roode. Capitalizing there on John Cena, wasting a lot of time. And now Bobby Roode drives the knee in the back of Cena's head. And Roode feeling pretty confident, and so he should be. He's being very good at times, but as we said, he's searching for a victory. Picks up John Cena, slams him down, and oh! He wrapped up John Cena, bombed him down, and we thought maybe Bobby Roode was going to be able to pick up the win there, but John Cena stays in it. And now Roode, oh, here we go! Glorious DDT! Where did that come from? Bobby Roode to beat Cena! Oh, the shoulder is just up at two! Oh my goodness! And Rude can't believe it. Cena just kicked out at two. So, so close. 
Now Rude's got Cena up. He spins him out. And delivers. A bit of a rude awakening there for John Cena. Cena. Trying to hang in there right now. Bobby Rude. He's coming back full force here. He's giving everything he's got. Cena's in a lot of trouble. Bobby Roode could be on the verge. The cover again. Hook of the leg. John Cena, has he got enough in the tank? He does. Well, Bobby Roode, he is certainly itching closer and closer. Can he pick up the victory this time? A more glorious DDT could do it. Instead, he drives that shoulder into him. Tackles down John Cena with that spear. And now Roode believes this is the moment. Oh, Cena on the counter. John Cena trying to hang in there right now. Bobby Roode giving everything he's got. And now Cena, hang on. Look out, the SDM. Cena's got it locked in. Roode's got nowhere to go. Will he submit? Bobby Roode, he's been in it for a bit of time. Cena wrenching it back. And Roode, he might be out of it. Cena with a cover. Roode, he might be out cold. Cena capitalizes. Bobby Roode refusing to tap out. Instead, he would fight until he had nothing left. Cena making Roode unable to kick out to the count of three. He would not tap out. He would not submit. But it meant that he had nothing left. Rude kicked out of the AA earlier on. Cena probably felt as though he might need to look for something else. Tried the STF. It didn't make him tap, but it made him, well, incapacitated for the three count. Bobby Rude could not survive. And John Cena picks up the victory. He's heading to Clash of Champions with a victory behind him. He is looking fantastic. Braun Strowman, John Cena for the Intercontinental Championship. What a match that will be. I can't wait for it. It should be an absolute blockbuster. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have time for for this edition of Universe Smart. If you did enjoy it, make sure you do leave a like on the video for me. Subscribe to see more Universe Smart episodes coming away very, very soon. Check us out on Twitter at Brennan Plays to so follow me and stay up to date with everything that I'm doing. Follow me on Twitch as well, twitch.tv slash Brennan Plays. We're going to be doing some premieres over on Twitch now. So what we're going to do is we're going to broadcast these Universe Mode episodes first over on Twitch. And of course, once that is done, we'll upload it here to YouTube as per usual. So make sure you are followed over there. Check out the website, brendanplays.com as well. Join up to the forums while you're there, brendanplays.com forward slash forums. Free to join. Join our Discord page whilst you're on the forums. Thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.